So let's take a look at thin layer chromatography. I'm going to cover it very quickly because um, it's just something to be exposed to. The first thing you do is extract the substance, I meaning you get the substance. The next thing you do is you spot it on the plate. You put it like the spill at the bottom. The next thing that you do is you place in the solvent, which is the, the stuff that you're going to be sucking up. After that, you watch the solvent front as it elutes upwards, causes that separation, hence the word chromatography. And then the next thing that happens is that it's developed, meaning it's colorized. And then what they do is they read the distance, the color, the resolution against a known standard. Let's get very practical. This is from a particular case that we had um, where it was, uh, was uh, screening for THC. And basically, and you're going to see this in urine-related cases, you're going to see it in solid drug dose cases, and, and they don't particularly do it for blood. But the important thing is to understand the process. They take that standard, that known standard, THC, that's coming from um, a traceable source, meaning that they absolutely know it contains THC. Then they do all of those things like we talked about before, the, splot, the, the spotting, and, and it elutes up that's there. And then these are unknown from cases. So you have the, the standard. It's right there. But then you can start to take a look over here and you can see, well, okay, that's what it's supposed to look like, but nothing really kind of looks like that except for maybe that one. You know, there's differences in the distance, the time that's related there, and it can be very subjective as far as the call as to whether or not that's THC and whether or not it's present. But the most instructive one to me is this one here. This one here means that someone got arrested for having pot, had to call one of you great folks up to defend them. No THC at, at all that's present there. Now, I wonder what happened with that guy's case, because my guy's case, unfortunately, was a nice, beautiful one right there. But <laughs> this guy, who knows what happened to him? He might have pled guilty, and it's just because you know, they did the nick kit on the side of the road when it went into the lab. Maybe they didn't get the lab result that, that came out of that. So you have to be aware, and you have to look for the raw data. OK, so again, the principle of thin layer chromatography, just think of good old uh, the bounty commercials that are there. And this is, now we're moving out of the, the realm of the make-believe, and we're going to start talking about forensic testing. Okay, forensic testing. What you have to understand is you have to understand that molecules have different shapes and forms based upon their different bonding that's there. On the left, we have coca juana molecules. On the right, we have methyl juana molecules. So different things have different chemical structures. This, if you've never seen it, is a gas chromatograph. A gas chromatograph is probably, you know, when you hear those magic words, a lot of attorneys immediately go, well, that's it. You know, we just got to work out a deal. If you understand gas chromatography and you can be exposed to it, uh, you will understand that that's not it, that there's a lot more to it. So let's take a look at it and get a little bit of background. What it basically is, is you have a sample tube, a headspace jar, and this is the actual device. It's the gas chromatograph. And what ends up happening is that this part right here is called a column. I actually have a column right here. We'll pass it around so everyone can take a look at it. And there's two different types of columns. So this is the machine. This is the gas chromatograph. The first type is what's called a, um, a packed column, which no one ever uses unless you're in Michigan, um, although I, I think Wisconsin. And they the more prevalent one is called the capillary column. Okay. This is a capillary column. Okay? It's very, very thin. This is where things get pumped through and it gets separated out because, again, it's called chromatography, separation science. The process that goes along with it is really easy to understand. You just have to be exposed to it. Okay, a couple of things. This is the, the vial, the headspace vial that contains the blood and it contains what's called a volatile of interest. I mean, it's a an analyte of interest, uh, a volatile organic compound, ethanol in our particular case. Okay, so it exists here in the jar. What the jar does is it gets heated. It might get shaked up a little bit. And what ends up happening is that between the liquid phase that is here and what is called the headspace here, it creates an equilibrium. It's called Henry's Law. 
Henry's law depends upon a closed system, so if there's any leaks, there's going to be problems with it. But what it says is that the amount that exists in the headspace is proportional to that which is inside the liquid phase of it. So what ends up happening with gas chromatography is you have a needle that comes in, it pierces the septum, the top part, it draws up a particular part of the uh, analytes of interest, it sends it through the column, and then what ends up happening is it hits what's called a flame ionization detector in this particular example, and it gets burned as after it separates out. The burning creates an electrical signal that gets recorded here as you see it separate out and as you see it hit the flame ionization detector into something that's called a chromatogram. Okay? So this is what it looks like. So you draw it up, two different molecules, one goes faster through, the other one slower through, hits the detector, and then that's how it comes out with the squiggly line at the end of the day. So more importantly, let's take a look at that one more time, just so that way everyone can take a look at it. And it goes through, elutes out, hits the detector, and that's where you get that chromatogram. This is to be distinguished from what's called a direct injection. A direct injection is when the needle goes into the fluid itself, here in a minute, and it draws out the blood and it can cause all sorts of havoc. I, I don't, your state doesn't do it, but it's the same basic principle that as it elutes out and separates out, that's there. So let's talk about the chromatogram and what ends up happening is, let's go back, retention time is the time that it took to separate out and to come out at the end and hit the flame ionization detector. Okay, so that's the retention time as it elutes. I'm going to promise it makes sense here in about two slides. Why does it separate out and why is it different? It's called sorption. Okay? I want you to imagine that you're inside of a mall, but it's one of these George Jetson type of malls where there is a, um, one of those walkways like you have in an airport that only goes in one particular direction. There's two analytes of interest in our particular example. There's the, the red one, which is me, and the blue one, which is my wife. Different types of stores attract me. Other types of stores you wouldn't have me caught dead in. Same with my wife. For example, I love Sharper Image. There's no way that you can pay me enough to be in White House Black Market. Okay? <laughs> you couldn't pay me enough to spend time in Crate and Barrel. Okay? But nevertheless, my wife, she likes those types of things. But the bottom line of it is, it's the same exact process. How quickly we get out is based upon the coating that's inside the capillary column and what it's made up in terms of whether it absorbs or it adsorbs or uh, absorbs, meaning it, it's attracted to it. So let's take a look here. As you can see, I'm one and done. I go into sharper image, I get out, she takes longer, and she gets out. But if you change the column, which is the same exact thing as changing, it's the same exact thing as changing the stores. Now this is my type of store. It's got a sharper image, a tie store. I'm going to spend a lot of time at my tailor shop. There's a gadget store, so see me next week. Uh, the bottom line of it is, if you change the components that are inside the column, there isn't one universal column. And so you can, through the chemistry of it, you can cause things to go out faster and slower. So in this example, I'm the red one. I'm sorry, I'm the blue one. It takes me more time to get out than my wife. There's sometimes some things that, we, that neither one of us like. Like we don't need to go to Boscov's when we weren't hungry. So that's how it gets separated out. And that results in what's called a chromatogram. A chromatogram is that, that representation that is there. The most important thing to take a look at with the chromatogram is understanding that you're comparing known times from a standard, meaning we know that when we send in a standard, meaning something that is a known substance, and we pushed it through, that it comes out at this relative point in time. It's called the retention time. That's how you can tell the difference between things that are like one another and things that are not like one another. Uh, methyl juana and coca juana in these particular circumstances. All right.